you have your Bibles this morning, let me go to uh, a text of scripture in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. 2 Chronicles 20, 20, and I'll pick up verse 21. It's a familiar text of scripture, but my eyes dropped on verse um, 20, uh, 20 and also verse 21, and I'll tie it together as uh, I can within this context. I'm going to read this from a translation that some of you might have. It's the New Living Translation. It just makes it sometimes brighter if you're dealing with a pointed portion of the text. But King James, New King James, would be just as well. Second Chronicles 20 and 20 and 21. Early the next morning, an army of Judah, some holly Judah, went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, all ye people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and ye shall be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting with the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. It's in this context of these scriptures here, I like to bring out a subject, stand firm, believe, and succeed. Stand firm, believe, and succeed. If you believe, you will succeed. If you believe, you will, you will succeed. Standing firm um, and believing as you succeed is a recipe. Standing firm, believing, and succeeding is a recipe for success. Success. Everybody wants a measure of success. I don't know too many people who grow up to say, I want to be a bum. I mean, I just want to be nothing in life. I don't know too many. I want to live in my mama's house until I go back to heaven. I don't know too many like that. They want your own measure of success. Success is the accomplishments of an aim or a purpose, and there is a thin line between failure and success. I have learned more from my failures than I have from my successes. Not many will agree to that, but you can learn something. The thing about failure, you got to fail, fall forward and not backwards. It's not about how hard or how low you fall, it's about how high you get back up. Success, Jesus puts it like this in Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter in verse 15. Beware of covetousness or caring about what someone else has. That's a problem for most of us. We're always eyeing what other people have and don't know what it took for them to get it. Know what it takes for them to hold on to it. Beware of covetousness for a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. It's not in what you have, it's who has you. Life is not measured by how much you own because there's always somebody that's got more than you. Can't measure my life by what I own because it comes like a wind, it comes and it goes. So it cannot be in what I own because that cannot be the measure of my life. Things, they come and go. I remember without talking to you, when some of you only had a coat closet in your house and you couldn't fill it up. It was a very small dwelling place called an apartment. The dream was to be able to have more things, to have more to do with those things. And now God has blessed over the years, you've turned a bedroom into a closet and still don't have enough. How dare you get up Sunday morning and say, what am I going to wear? <laughs> but this is what we do. I'm, I'm, get off that street, get off that street. We have more 
We're still not satisfied, still not full or fulfilled because we want some more. We look at our neighbor's dwelling and wonder how they got three cars in the driveway. I'm going to get me another car. Well, that's a car payment, that's car insurance, that's a, if you can afford it, go for it. But it's not going to help your consistency or your abundance of life. It is in this that we bring our text to the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Jehoshaphat here was facing a failure and a dilemma and trying to get to success. 2 Chronicles 20 and around verse, I think, 6 to 12. He is facing an impending danger against Moab, against Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They're coming up against him to fight him and to diminish the success that God had given his people. Jehoshaphat, here in this short prayer between verse 6 and 12, beautiful prayer he lays out in that context, and he talks to the Lord about what the Lord has given him. And he wants the Lord to step in now and defend him and defend his people. As he goes on through this prayer, which I'm going to jump past, I want you to note 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 13. Jehoshaphat, all Judah, stood before the Lord. Jehoshaphat and all Judah. Somebody say praise. praise. Stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. It was a beautiful scene to see what was impending danger coming at them. So they grabbed the hands, stood out in the middle of the street or in the arena or in the atmosphere with the little ones, holding their hands, standing before the Lord. As they stood there, he prayed a prayer again and told the Lord that we are not anything against this great multitude. But as they were standing there in verse 14 of 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 14, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, and he prophesied. They went from impending danger to prayer, and now they're getting ready to get a prophetic word. God was how to send you a word right on time, and that word will change the destiny of your life. I believe in prophecy. I believe in the fivefold ministry. And if there's a prophetic word, if it is from a true prophet, then God has to bag it up because it is the word of the Lord. Jezel begins to prophesy the word of the Lord. And he said, listen, all ye of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you too, King Jehoshaphat. Here he comes. Thus says the Lord. I like that. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. What kind of multitude? A great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. That's what we preach. This battle is not yours, but it's God's. And I think God has a sense of humor to put me out in front of a battle that ain't got nothing to do with me. Go on, handle it, Jesus. But I need someone I would know will have faith to face it and stand in victory and succeed. Well, could you have told me what you were going to do before you told me what you were going to do so I can know what you're doing? No. Because you wouldn't run. You prayed. I got an answer. And the prophet spoke. What you're going through right now is not your battle. It's the Lord's. And if you created the battle, thank God for Romans 8, 28. It's all going to work together for the good of them, the love of God, and are called according to his purpose. This great multitude, this great multitude, and some of you are facing multitudes of things, multitudes of problems. If it ain't one thing, it's as multitudes. Every time I fix one problem, here come the other problem. Get one kid straightened out, the other one you just go coo coo. Lord have mercy, hold them both down. Now the dog won't bark. Everything just seems to just get multitudes of trouble. 
And if that ain't not enough, is that, if that's not enough, once you settle your problem, here come your friends with problems. So just don't come over to my house with no problem. I got all my problems straightened out for this week. I don't want you to bring no problems. Stand firm, believe, and succeed is a recipe for success. This is what the Lord says. Thus says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this great, mighty army. But the battle is not yours. It's, it's God. It's God. He's speaking to the spirit of discouragement by a great multitude. There are some times that I feel like there's more against me than for me. Because people can fool you by that, hey, y'all, and wishing you were dead somewhere. Upset that you even have the, the audacity to come back again. Everybody does not want you to succeed, nor to be successful. You can feel it in the body language sometimes when you go around certain cousin them. Oh, do I sense a little bit of hatred? Uh, uh, do, I, do I pick up a spirit of, I can't stand you? Not, not, does that, what, is that what I feel coming off of you right now? Well, you have not given me $2 to make me want to holler, so why are you upset about what I got? And while you're cleaning your teeth like a Jamaican man, and you haven't eaten anything, man. <laughs> Discourage me because this great multitude, a great number of people are things that can come against you. I was in Accra, Ghana last year, and I was visiting Archbishop, and he was praying for me in the, in the prayer room, and and his prayer team, it's just a beautiful place to be to see these African Ghanaian brothers just praying for you, pouring oil on me. I said, well, what about my clothes? They just get some new ones. I said, yeah, just pouring oil like water. Oil was just running. I said, but why all this oil? He said, I don't want it to be on you. I want it to be in you. I want to. I said, well, can I take my shirt off? No, I don't take a shirt off. I'm going to put oil on it. Take these clothes home and put them on again and again and again. And when I really get down serious with prayer, I see I go in my closet, take out my plastic bags, put on these oily clothes, and say, Lord, I thank you for Ghanaian oil. Because <laughs> these demons I'm fighting right now, I need a weapon that can push them back. <laughs> he anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. But here we are with a place of discouragement. I have a vision that I believe I got from the Lord, and I want to succeed in this area of this vision. I want to see it come to pass on earth while I'm living. And the more I get closer to seeing it possibly happen, it seems like it gets further and further away. And 89 is coming. And I said, Lord, before 89, Show me what you said you were going to do. If I were to dream of corporate America, I would go get Fortune 500 people to help me build my corporation. But I wouldn't go get someone that doesn't have a vision for the life and for themselves. Sometimes you hire, get around the wrong people, and when you walk in, it just discourages you. They're drinking coffee, and it's 11. Is anybody going to go to work to try to push the vision forward? Discouragement can come in waves. Discouragement is an on-time assignment of the enemy to cause you to abort your assignment. Miss your moment, abandon your mission, crawl into a sinkhole in a cave like Elijah and wish to die. I remember on Yale Street, we had just got started, and you have a lot of my Yale Street stories, but this particular Sunday, I went to church, and the time had changed. I said, well, they're going to they're gonna be on time because the time changed. And I walked in, it's like the time, like it kept changing. I said, Lord, is anybody going to show up today? It's like, and I'm sitting there nervous as I can be. It's like, we didn't have about 26, 30 people in the building, and half of them didn't show up. It's like, well, 
And so I can sit courage in the day because the time changed. I preached so hard in my little black robe like it was the last sermon I had. They're going to wish they had made it. Here. <laughs> and got in my little blue Chevy Love truck. Drove back to my apartment crying. Saying, God, I know you didn't call me for this. This, this, this can't be my story. This, this, this will take, a, take your soul out of you right here. Like, Lord. Then came the Wednesday night, midweek, six, eight people showed up. It was like, oh, Lord, no, no, no. I wish we was going online back then. I, listen. <laughs> I said, Lord, this, this, can't be, this can't be it right here. He said, All right, let's just keep going. So discouragement comes, an assignment of the enemy to abort your mission. But I thank God that, he, that that inner prompting encourages us to go past the discouragement. Get out of the cave in the hole like Elijah. And realize that God is bringing things to pass. I was not the brightest in school. I'm not throwing that off. Be as smart as you can be. Go on to college and get as high as degrees you can get. I took that test called the um, S. Yeah, that one right there. So. I took that test three times. He said, if you don't pass, you know what it's going to mean, don't you? It's going to be here next year. I said, oh, no. no. So after repenting for everything I took into the test room, <laughs> are we getting up out of here? I tell you that. <laughs> We're getting up out of here. These are things I, laugh if you want. I'm getting up out of here. I, 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 oh, no. Oh, no. I'm walking. Walked across the stage for graduation. They gave me a piece of paper. I opened it up and it was blank. It's like, oh no, the devil is alive. Wait, where my plumber? <laughs> well, we wanted you to walk and get a piece of paper, or you would not get your certificate to after summer school. Fine, I go to summer school, but I'm not going back for another year. I've done 12 years in this place. I've done 12 years long. I've been here for 12 years. I've been one of the most eating welfare and tickets and food stamps and luncheons and carrying on. I've been 12 years of this. And I get, I'm done with this. But discouragement is that I couldn't pass the test, but I was able to pass it, thank God, with some assistance and some help. <laughs> but we got past it. I'm not encouraging anybody to do this. I'm just telling you what I had to do. Encour discouragement, discouragement is, is, is very real and um, you often see it after you had a big high or a big success of something. Someone comes in or something comes in and drops you to an anticlimactic low because it wants to take out the joy of your success. And many times the, the, the Holy Spirit has to build you up and push you out of that place. And you have to have dialogue within yourself that I am who God says I am. It's that own personal internal praise service where you jump around and shout and praise God for yourself. You're not waiting for the organ and it sounds good when it hits it, but you have a song inside of you that says, I am the one God called and nobody can do this but me. And the encouragement comes that when you know for yourself who you are and whose you are, you can't wait for that off and on, you did good. You got to know for yourself, he said, well done. And once he says, well done, that ends it all. Refuse to give up to the enemy is what I decided to do. Discouragement comes, but when, you, when it comes in such a wave, I become more in my own self, rebellious with an attitude of a competitive mindset that I refuse to give the enemy the benefits to think that I couldn't finish what I started. Oh my God, if you could, look at somebody and that's courage right there. When you just let the devil know, I don't care what you're saying. I'm gonna get back in it just because you say I'm not gonna finish it. Because you saying it ain't gonna happen. Yes, that's when God pushes you even to the endurance of the cross and the race that was set before Jesus, he endured the cross. One of the greatest gifts you can give yourselves is to, for the remedy of discouragement is rest. Rest is an antidote to change the, 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 the energy or the frequency of discouragement. 
Don't keep walking around stressing. Go to bed and rest. You can't fix it until it's fixable. So don't stress out about it. He'll give you peaceful rest <laughs> in the middle of the storm. So I'm going to just chill out. What you going to do? But just, just take it easy. This ain't your first test. You've, you've seen God work before. I'm talking about a penny looking for change and he comes through with a wave and a check. God always come through for you. That's what he does. And that's who he is. Rest. It's one of the greatest gifts for discouragement. And I'm going home this evening in a few minutes. I'm going to rest. Watch a basketball game. Chill out. Eat some chips. We didn't preach good. Nobody was like, that's okay. I mean, it's not my word. It's just, I'll do it again next week. But right now, I'm not going to trip out about it. Well, you know, some people ain't moving. They, they ain't moving to the guy and they're just looking at you. I'm not moving on emotion. You, you can wave your hand if you want to, holler. But I got up that a long time ago. <laughs> Waiting for you to say, okay, go ahead, preach. That's okay. Sometimes the word's so heavy, you, I can't move. <laughs> that's okay. Listen to what Jesus says about discouragement, or the Bible says about, about discouragement. In Deuteronomy 31 and 8, and the Lord, Deuteronomy 31 and 8, New King James, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be it dismayed or at utter loss. Deuteronomy 31, 8, 8. Now, that's some encouraging words. That God is going before me. Mm -hmm. He will be with me. Mm -hmm. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Let me show it to you. Here I am. The Lord goes before me. Come on, I got this. Making a way. I get discouraged. He comes back. Are you still with me? Come on. And he goes out in front again. Then he comes back with me and tells me, listen, we're not there yet. You keep coming. Because every step you take, you're only walking in my steps. So you're not leading this. I'm leading this. The reason you got to where you are today, it was not you. It was me. I need five people to say he'll make a way out of no way. You are amazed that you live in a house. You are even more amazed of what you got, you got. You are even mind blown to think about the reasonable amount of health that you have, which you don't, should not have. But you have it. It wasn't you that did it, but it was what that goes before me. Every demon you're going to face, every battle you're going to have to fight, anything you're going to have to come up against, before you get there, God said, I'll be there. He goes before me. Another translation of that Deuteronomy 8, 31 and 8 says it like this. The Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you and will never fail you nor abandon you. Somehow I got some help. <laughs> Concluding the message this morning, I want to bring to this point. The three things that Joseph had did before the battle. Stand firm and watch God move on your behalf. Second Chronicles 20 and 20, he charged the army to believe in God and in his prophets. I charge you. He filled them with excitement, tension, and emotion. Believe this thing. Keep in mind, they just prayed and they moved out from discouragement. They prayed and they came to a word of a prophecy. God says, the battle's not yours, it's, it belongs to him. On his way out to the battle, he said, hold on. Somebody didn't get it. I want you to believe this and watch us prosper. Watch God do what he says. I charge you. It was his confidence 
that made them more confident. And I asked the Lord, why, why you give all this weight on Jehoshaphat for him to have to encourage the people to believe the word? They heard the word. But people watch the leader. If the husband is not strong in the house, the wife might have to step up. But sometimes you're like, wait, 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 baby, can we do it? I don't know. I looked at the other night. I don't know. Look, baby, that ain't what the Lord told me. God says, put the money down. We're going to get into this place. It's going to open this business up. So I don't want to hear no negative right now. We're going for this, baby. I'm not trying to get in front of you, honey. I don't want you to lead, but I need you to lead so I can follow. His enthusiasm encouraged them. You know, there are certain people you can get around that when you're down, they can encourage you. And make you feel like, oh, you know what? It is possible for them that believe. Here's the element of faith that must proceed and encounter the enemy of defeat and discouragement. Believe. Charging them. We're going to prosper. Having faith means that you build your life on God's word. What did God say about it? You conduct yourself according to the word of God and react to God's word. If God said it, that's it. That settles it. And his word guides you even through troubled waters. And it brings you to that reward that he promised. Second thing in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20, 21. Having discussed this, with the people he consulted or counseled the people. He discussed this. Here's a type of bringing to an understanding of the course of action. Are we on the same page? How can two walk together except they be in agreement? Anyone that's in business know you got to get those people on the same page with you. If you hire too many employees, you have employees. And they want it easy. They don't want to move and work. But when you find employees that have vision in them, it makes a difference. Oh, that didn't go over very well. Um, are we on the same page? Housekeeper comes over and they're done in an hour. I say, hold on. We ain't filthy, but you ain't done in no hour. I tell you that. We got to do a little more work in here. If not, we're going to do some deep cleaning today. And make sure things are going to be all right when you walk up out of here. Because we already got paid. But, but are we on the same page? Uh, that didn't go over very well at all. Okay, believing and being on the same page is walking in harmony and in unison. If we're going to get together and be friends, I don't want to be always holding you up. We got to strengthen each other in our friendship. Why I got to always be carrying you? What you mean? Oh, is this a date or this is just we don't go pay for each other's meal? What are we doing here? I can take myself to eat, but you ask me... Are we on the same page? Are we going in the same direction? Well, I've had it for years, but God, God sent me here to help you. I said, get in line. <laughs> there's a whole lot of people here to help. I'm coming up. Why do you want to come up front to help? Why don't you just serve somewhere? Find a place where you can put your hands to something. I need to be up front. Oh, you want the light. Don't worry. You're going to get it, and they're going to tell you about it. <laughs> but it's that mindset. Are we on the same page? page believe in the Lord then you will also be able to stand because the winds are going to blow storms are going to come water's going to hit things are going to hit up against you but believe the Lord you'll be able to stand standing here standing firm means to refuse to change your mind stand and see the salvation of the Lord Paul in Ephesians says, stands firm. Have your learns gated girded blah, 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 blah. he said but the standing firm means I'm standing on God's word Believe his prophet and you shall, you will succeed. To achieve, succeed is to achieve the desired results in unwavering faith. We would not experience failure, but we will experience victory. It's something about the taste of experiencing victory. And once you've had it, defeat is not an option. You may only had it a little bit in your life, but at least you experienced it. When you fought that little girl, did you thought she was going to whoop, going to whoop you, but you won that fight. Now, you lost all the others, but at least you won one. 
But once you have an element of success in your life, you don't want to go back to defeat. Success is meeting the objective of goal. That's what success is. Learning from my mistakes and improving on those. Creating something valuable for my life. That's what success to me is. Being able to stay focused when everybody else is distracted. You can't be successful and not stay focused. Once you see your target and your goal, let no one distract you from your objective. You know what God told you and you can't sleep lest you get there. Every time you try to get away from it, it comes back to you as a heavy cloud. Say, you remember what I told you. Well, Lord, I gave up on that, but I didn't give up on that one. I promised it to you. I'm going to bring it to pass. You dreamed it because I gave you the dream. You had a vision because I gave you the vision. But now you got to make sure you don't stop till you get there. I want my life to be successful, to succeed in the things of God, to experience a desired victory in the name of Jesus. Lastly, he appointed singers to sing praises to the Lord before the army began to march. It's all right there. You see that you have to consult with, I'm sorry, you have to make sure you're talking to yourself right. Believe the Lord. Believe his prophet. Charge yourself and everybody else that's with you. Are we on the same page? And then you get a praiser out in front. Because you don't wait till the battle is over. You praise God right now. Your attitude is a great determination of your altitude. The more you praise, the higher you go. Praise is not just an acronym of shouting hallelujah Jesus. No, it's an internal confidence that it's all ready done. It's victory before you get to the arena. You get out in front. Now everybody can't do this, but Judah is in the house this morning. I know Judah is in the house this morning because Judah opens up the praise service, breaks the atmosphere, and bring you into the throne room of God. The reason the enemy don't want you to praise God because your praise, Psalms 2 and 8, steals the enemy. If you praise him, he'll stop coming to your house because he can't come into the midst of praise. Why, Pastor House? Because God dwells in the midst of praise. Praise. You can't be silent all your life. You got to know when to praise and when to be silent. This morning is a time of praise because God is opening a new door for your life. Praise is not just who you are. Praise is what you do. It's praise time in the mountaintop experience. Come on church. Let me hear your best praise. Put on somebody say, neighbor, I might get a little loud for the next 60 seconds, but when I think about cancer that passed my house, and COVID that passed my house, and death that passed my house, and the enemy that passed my house, I'm going to shut it down with a prayer. Put on somebody say, am I on the right road? Are we on the same page? Can we do this thing together? Give God a shout! Hold your hands up, Father, I bless you. Thank you for sending your word to our hearts. Open my understanding to how to deal with discouragement. It sometimes comes in waves. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Let me keep the attribute of thanksgiving. Stand firm, believe, and succeed. I believe my worst days are over and my best days are yet to come encourage somebody say I've been fighting this devil a long time 
I'm looking, Sheila, 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 I'm looking for a season of just praise. A season of just breakthrough. A long season of dancing and praising God. Why not? If the devil gave me all the hell up to hell, then God, you gotta outdo him. This is a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is flowing your way. Season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to you. Hold your hands up. Say, I will stand firm. I will believe the prophets. I will succeed in the name of Jesus. My success is not in things, but it is in, but it is in, but is it in, but it is in the power of God. I am successful, journeying well because of Jesus. My car brought me to church, but Jesus was the pilot. However I got here. Sing it out if you hear it. Come on, stand to be able to stand. And prosperity is a new season coming to me. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. Victor King, good to see you, boy. want to come to this altar for prayer come now it's not a season to be alone I'm gonna pray over you collectively and if you want the ministers to get your information come close to the altar just come quickly I'm gonna pray over you corporately and if you want the ministers to further assist you in prayer and guidance at the end of the prayer I'll give you direction but come close come close you're not alone you're not abandoned. God is with you. Remember the word of the Lord. In Deuteronomy 31 and 8, he's going before you. He will be with you. He will strengthen you. He will encourage you. He won't leave you alone. It'll go as against, it goes totally against his word. And he cannot deny his word. God is with you. I know the Lord sent this message for you who are dealing with multitude of problems, multitudes of things. I mean, a deluge of burdens. But God's going before you and he has you. You're going to succeed. The devil knows you're going to succeed, but you got to know you're going to succeed. God needed a testimony, so he chose you and he chose me to succeed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, get in this prayer. Some more are coming. Quickly get in this prayer. Get in this prayer. Believe the Lord. Believe his prophet. So shall you prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're at the altar, if you can, all over this room, just hold your hands up slightly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for assembling in this altar. No one knows what I came down here with or carrying, but you see and you know all things. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, receive this burden. I transfer it over to you. You said I can cast all my cares on you because you care for me. 
You even said in your word that you're not putting no more on me than I'm able to bear. God, I'm at my breaking point. But I know also it's my making point. Because what don't break me will make me stronger. So strengthen me so I don't quit and I don't give up and I don't throw in my faith. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that you did not allow this thing to crush me and destroy me. I know the great multitude, the battle that I face is more than I can number, but it cannot outnumber you. So this morning, in the name of Jesus, the name above every name, every problem will bow every tongue will confess that you're lord of the breakthrough you are lord of the breakthrough in the name of jesus and before i leave this altar i'm going to clap my hands and give you thanks i'm going before my victory with some praise i'm going before my victory with some praise Throw your head back and shout hallelujah!